So this, uh, this session, the next two hours, will be uh, reporting on work we have been going, been going on for some years. We have the plenary session in the last annual conference. Then we presented our plans for the coming year. And now we would like to tell and share what we have done the last year and what kind of ambitions we have for the coming years on doing DHS2 for education. However, looking at cross-sector as a very, very important thing and also local innovation that comes with it, that we need to do. So this picture is from the field work in, the, in the Uganda. So I'm not getting the next slide here. Yes, I do. So the whole idea with the project of ours that we thank you, NORAD, that NORAD has funded is actually to look at DHS2 as a generic platform, which we do, but then beyond health and looking at how we can reuse the software features how we can reuse the IT capacity in the countries and in the region uh, and in the um, his groups. And of course, uh, since we're now talking to the global community, also leverage the global community to look how we can actually support a government and the e-government platform. And we are, we, today we will talk about education, but we also will, also will talk about water and sanitation. And talking about education, nutrition is also important. I mean, health programs very often um, uh, are uh, working with the schools in order to distribute. And later, of course, also vaccine. So this is what we will talk about today. Uh, we will report on the NORAD project um, that will um, not end because we also got a, a research project from KIPS, which is the GP. We will talk about that under plans and ambitions. But the first uh, that will kick off our DHS2 for EMIS and education will be Alphaba from the Ministry of uh, Basic and Secondary Education in the Gambia and tell about the Gambia story. Gambia is, however, a small country. It's very, very important for us because that has been our living lab with what it, where we experiment and try to see what's possible. And we will show the rest of the world what's possible. And then we have uh, Prosper Bimbisa from his Uganda talking about decentralization of EMIS using DHS2 in Uganda, having somewhat a different approach than the, the Gambian story, which is very top down, very um, uh, led by the ministry. The, the, the DHS2 in Uganda, more uh, decentralized through the districts. That's a very, very interesting story. And then we will continue to, I don't see my slides anymore. I hope you do. What happened now? I don't see my slide, but I know my slides. And um, what happened? Sorry for that. Taking all my script, someone. And then we will continue with cross sector innovations, local innovations and cross sector. We will have examples from the Uganda, from Uganda, from the Gambia, from, from uh, Mozambique as well. And we we'll see that cross sector, as I mentioned, the wash, the water sanitation, the COVID 19. The, the importance of uh, liaison with schools when it comes to vaccine campaigns and stuff uh, is very important for the future. So we will also discuss uh, and present innovations when it comes to them, to the uh, COVID-19 work. And then we will end up with plans and ambitions. Um, Terry and Knut will present that one. Uh, Seferino from his Mozambique and Jerry from his Mr. Central Africa will present uh, innovations from the Gambia and, and, and Mozambique. Sorry, I forgot to say that because they don't put their names often in the, in the presentations. Ending up with talking about ambitions and plans. And some of you uh, maybe remember that we, we plan to arrange uh, a big academy in the Gambia just after the, when uh, the lockdown hit us in March. Uh, that is postponed. We are thinking of doing it uh, uh, as a digital one, um, if the lockdown is continued, and I mean, more lockdown with the planes, actually. And then Tari and Knut will talk about the research project, the PhD, the work with them, the, the packages with the UNESCO, collaboration with UNICEF. And please, everyone, we would like to revamp the community of practice. All of you have been signing on, I guess, I hope, uh, during this uh, conference. And we can have questions there. We can also keep in touch and discuss further. Okay. I now will give the word for uh, to um, to Alpha. Alpha, you can then share your screen. Alpha Ba from the Gambia Ministry of yes. Basic and Secondary Education. 
uh, like Christine said, we are going to present the Gambia case, particularly for DHIS2, DHIS2 for education image project in the Gambia. Uh, the first important thing, let me, for some of you who may not know Gambia, in the Gambia we have one sector policy uh, aligned to the SDG4, which is being implemented by two ministries, basic and secondary education ministry, that is the ministry that we are, and we have a higher education ministry. Um, and this is the flow, uh, the chart about our minister, the permanent secretary, and we have regional directors, head office directors, and you will see at the bottom there under the planning directorate where we have our EMIS unit. Um, but it's very important to say that because of the one sector policy, we also have in the Gambia what we call um, national EMIS technical team. So the EMIS unit at the Ministry of Basic and the EMIS unit at the Ministry of Higher Education has are working together to build one EMIS policy for the first time. For a very long time, we have been operating individually, but now with this approach, we are going to have one policy so that our EMIS will be following from lower level, from the daycare up to the higher and tertiary. Now, in terms of the education structure of the Gambia, we uh, there is the structure for the basic and secondary and the whole sector. You have the ECD and the nursery, where you have three, three to six, uh, six year olds, and then the lower basic, that is the primary school and the upper basic. Then you have um, the Tibet senior secondary school and the higher and tertiary, according to um, the as the diagram shows. Just this to tell you. Now. But there is very, something very important about the Gambia case of EMIS. Uh, for a very long time, the country have always had um, some very key policy objective in the, in, in the various policies. Every education policy since 1998 has a key focus on education management and education data or school data. So right now, you will see in the various policies, uh, the issue of EMIS is always highlighted. And that's one of the reasons we are always challenged as a, as a planning director and a unit to ensure we are able to fulfill these policies. And this, um, this year, this current policy, the 2016-2030, has a specific um, uh, statement that says that we must have unique individuals ID for, for in the EMIS data. And this is something that we have, we have had over the years and right now you could see that uh, we are beginning to start implementing it uh, with this collaboration with, uh, with, with DHIS and His West Africa. But there are additional, um, additional issues also that are, not, um, so that are not directly linked to EMIS, but they are very supportive to EMIS, the development of the technology in terms of data. For example, uh, we're talking about uh, monitoring at the local level, and then we're talking about ensuring SDG4 data is fulfilled in this policy. The issue of digitizing the curriculum is already in this policy. Computers and tablet will be provided from primary schools, and there are a lot of pilot of that. EMIS will be decentralized to school. This is very specific, which means a school has to have EMIS systems. Teacher register has to be digitalized. Student learner identification and the learning assessment data has to be improved. In fact, we have a learning assessment policy. Then we said school report card. You, these are things that has been mentioned in the policy not in the, in the form of EMIS. And then you have classroom observation tool. So these are very important policy objectives that are going to be measured right now in this policy. And we have another specific one about unit ID, but we believe these are the ones that are really um, uh, enabling the environment and that EMIS can benefit from, or they can benefit from EMIS uh, as a piggyback. Uh, and in addition to that, we have an internet, uh, um, internet, uh, program and then a TV program for, for the school right now. Now, in coming back to the image, just to give you an example, uh, our current image is using aggregate data. We collect data in November every year. And when the school opens in September, we collect in November. In February, we have a provisional report and it may be published a yearbook. And these are our stakeholders in the, within the ministry. Image staff at head office, regional office. We have planning focal points. We have cluster monitors that are closer to the schools and then the involvement of the head teachers, and we have other units like the ECD, the special need unit, inclusive education, and non-formal unit supporting us. So this, this screen is just showing you the kind of data we have. But luckily for us, this aggregate data, we've been able to publish it on, on a daily, on a yearly basis in May. Since 2014, we've been able to report by the end of May, a whole complete 
report on the on the on, on the on the emis data we are collecting but by 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 2000 and, um for 16 17 and 18 our management was even saying that we need to change so everybody even us the image unit we got a bit of like we needed to do more than this so the issue of collecting data for individual was very um, was even um demanding from our, even the internal stakeholders like people working on emis we're so used to collecting what we, we, we are collecting. And their action was data all the time. Even when we uh, fill the questionnaire for UIS, there are so many indicators or data that UIS is asking. The, the current image cannot respond. So we, the, the need for shifting is very important. But what do you do with the data for the current data? This is a community report card where we share our data integrated with our additional data in terms of the inputs, in terms of the finances. And then we have a whole report at the end of this year before the school go to summer holiday parents and community are invited in the school to discuss the, the outcome of the school in terms of learning outcome in terms of um, the, 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 the resources provided so this school report is now aggregated by uh, they look at the school level and it is the report is compared based on how how the school did with the other schools in the in the cluster how does the school fare with the regional dis, with the district how does the school did with the with the uh, with the whole country and that's at the at the regional level? So these are the things that the community can get feedback and know that whether they are taking more accountability at the local level. That's one of the use. The other thing we use it is the classroom observation tool. Some this is very important. We have not able to digitize this yet, but we are we are beginning to ensure that we are able to um, in, uh, include it in the image, and we hope by this um, collaboration with DHIS we'll be able to have a, 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 this fully integrated. Now, we, we, we already had what we call um, teacher attendance and learner for since 2012 or 2014, we've been struggling with using SMS to, um, to collect teacher data for all our public schools using SMS. And this year we have got a new pilot and that, that will be discussed later in this, um, in this um, conference by, by, by the, the, the participation of DHIS. Now, this is an example of our all teacher attendance register looks like. We used to have a SMS data sent to a web server, and you could see on the screen that you can see the, the name of the teacher and uh, the school and the, the, the message about the teacher. It's a very difficult process. You have to type this, the numbers with the commas, and it has to go in a format so that you can send it. If you miss even a key, it used to be a problem, and we used to spend so much time to, to, to manage this but now we have got a new a new system that we will discuss in a moment because of the his now the other we can't hear you now alpha your your voice disappeared after you told the problems with the sms solution as it was before maybe you need to reconnect through your mobile phone using mobile internet can you hear me alpha hmm you lost the voice we, we lost the internet this shows that the voluntary how vulnerable we are for the for the um, the connections and now we stop sharing hmm. He's reconnecting now, I guess. So we need to be patient to to get um, the Gambia in again. Are you there, Alpha? Are you back, um, Alpha? No, not yet. How long will we wait? How long shall we wait? Maybe we uh, uh, we bring in Prosper to talk about the Uganda story and then Alpha coming back. Is that okay, Prosper? Are you there, Prosper? Yes, yeah, you are. Yes, if you share your slides, we, we, and then we come back with the rest of the Gambian story afterwards. That's fine. I think Alpha is coming back now. 
Okay, okay. Somebody need to admit him. Okay, sorry. So let's let's try again. Alpha, are you? Can you share your screen and continue from the SM, old SMS solution? If we are not able, we do Uganda story first, and then you come in after. Can you share oh, your screen, Alpha? Uh, you are not sharing your screen. Oh. I mean, but now we hear you. Please share screen and continue where you ended uh, the you SMS. Huh? Okay, can you give me access to share my screen? Mm, sorry, I didn't know that I was just talking in the air. Oh, okay, but uh, you need to, I mean, then you, you just share, I think maybe, maybe Prosper. Can you, can you allow me to share my screen? You are allowed, my friend. Uh, Prosper, you have stopped sharing. So, Alpha, you can just put, yes. click on the sharing again and share. Otherwise, we... Okay, I'm here. Yeah, um, can you share? You cannot yes, share? Yes, I'm here. Otherwise, I I'm can share. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. I was... Uh, yeah, I was, you were I was on the SMA teacher... You were on the end of the teacher attendance saying that you okay. will hear more about the new solutions in DHS2 later, okay? Yes, Over. okay. I, okay. Then, I was, then I came to this point. I was talking about the the EMIS peer review or the Gambia EMIS peer review. Um, just saying that EMIS is also a very important objective uh, pillar for the African Union education strategy and the, the wider ECOWAS um, uh, regional block, block. And the Gambia EMIS peer review was reviewed in 2018 by EMIS peer reviewers from Sierra Leone, Namibia, Burkina Faso, and in the good support of ADEA. And they found the EMIS uh, reports and processes are, are, are in place, and there are some key recommendations and findings on this report that we share. So Didi was just telling us that as a country, how we are doing. So another reason why we needed to, to, to see from um, aggregate data to respond to our individual policy so that we can able to um, meet the, the, the new demands of data from, from in town learning assessment, from UIS, from our regional, and even from at the country level, we have challenges of what we can, um, what we can share. So but the, the focus, the main purpose of this, um, one of the things, learning from lessons, dealing with illness in the Gambia, we said that uh, we must have data that will respond to the national level so that we have data individually that will look at the socioeconomic data uh, and then and so that every child has is, is, is uh, having a unique ID and then we and so that we are able to collect all the additional data because every now and then in the Gambia every two years we used to go and collect a sample size of the background and like we, we have a survey where we ask the kids whether they have breakfast in the morning before they come to work whether they have television, whether they have books, whether their parent has gone to school. These are data we need every now and then. And now we are trying to include part of that in this profile. And again, in terms of the assessment, there is always a problem of linking the current assessment, even the national assessment test we are using is a problem to link it with our data. There is also a problem of incorporating exam data from West African Exam Council. It's always a problem to, uh, to link it with our image data. So we are ensuring that this new image system would end so all this thing is interoperable from different sources. And again, the student attendance will be something that will be integrated in this big platform. But what is important is, if you take school to image data and system to the schools and you don't provide incentive for the head teachers and the school and the local people to do it, they would still con con uh, perceive your image as something, ah, it's for the planning unit again. But if you provide it so that, the school headmaster and his teachers can use this system to respond to their own individual need before they leave, before the data leaves to their, their doors, then it will, make, it, will, it will be a good practice for them to keep it and ensure it. So we are ensuring that the school administration can use the records for financial management. It can handle their meetings. It can handle their school improvement um, uh, planning. So all the other administrative issues at the school, this email system should address that first. So when it addresses all these things, this is this, the sum of that the image need for the national and the regional level. So these are the issues that this is the this is the workaround we want to use to ensure that we increase buying at the at the at the at the local level because now that it's going to the schools, if we don't have their buying, forget about it. So again, what we are going to do, we ensure that at the central and the regional level, if you put image system everywhere and the regional office and the cluster monitors cannot use it to support their, what they are doing, 
again, they will not monitor it at the, at the school level. Because these are your frontliners. After head office, these are the people who need it. What can they do with the EMIS? They need to do it for teacher posting and placement, national teacher register. The, there are routine human resource processes that they do when they visit schools and go around. How does this tool help them to so that they can benefit from it? So these are some of the, the stock absorbers or this incentive we have for every stakeholder. That way, the regional office will buy into the EMIS, the school will buy into it, and then by us at the head office, we would have make a holistically address every stakeholder's needs uh, go, going forward. Now, this is where we are now coming with the HIPS West Africa partnership and with the UIO, University of Oslo. So we, 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 we had first um, discourse with the, this is what a, a very important story because we were working on this and wondering how we can start. And eventually um, we, 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 we met and then it, is, it becomes a, a very good relationship because the fact that uh, one of the incentive or one of the motivation is the fact that DHIS was already in the Gambia and in the Ministry of Health for a very long time. So we already have some kind of history and capacity somewhere. And this is very important for the government of the Gambia because the government of the Gambia at the Ministry of Information also is trying to make sure that we have staff that can support each other. Now we are beginning to see a relationship between these two ministries if DHIS works in education whereby we will be able to share resources. Because incidentally, the East West Africa, who are the, very, who are the same people supporting health are the same people supporting us. So this is very, very, very cost effective for, for, for the initiative. And that's again, when you think of the, the birth certificate and birth register, which we have started discussing with the Minister of Health, in, in, in terms of interoperability, in terms of um, software system, we don't have to have any problem. The only thing we need to do is to enable the two ministries to start talking and agree on the onion of operation, but the, the, the Tomorrow, the public actually falling, right? They feel somebody has somebody to there will not be money. And then first we said that before we call that is hello. Are you hearing me? So hello. We are hearing you, but someone is uh, has unmuted okay. and started so to take in, over. In, so in January, February, we have an MOU that we are going to work together based on this. And then we needed to ensure that our management to, to be convinced that we can work together because there is a big question mark about are we really ready to do, go individual, given the rate of change in terms of image and staff and all those capacity issues. Then we needed to say that, what about uh, this? So we needed to uh, ask image uh, to customize into DHI. So we, we gave the DHIS team some, some, some forms and say, can you develop this? So that we will see and show our managers and we will be convinced that we can go this direction. So we did that in the daily attendance forms and then we, we, we made a tracker for teacher attendance system. And by November, we, we had a student research um, and which we will talk about also. So right now we are doing the, uh, there was a, tra a, a tracker for pilot tests. And then we, we had planned for the DHIS Academy with Christine Menson and it will be mentioned later. And then we have the tracker implementation. We had the student tracker, uh, which is also collecting the bio data, like the socioeconomic data for information. Teacher tracker also has bio data, qualification, work history, leave and disciplinary record. This is also linked to the payroll. And then we are looking at the class tracker with, ex with, with exam, the student and the, the examination and the assessment, the promotional history of the student. So that because now the student can be tracked. You can, you can now link the national assessment exam for grade three with the national assessment exam for grade five, and maybe later when you do your final exam or assessment, things like that. Now, what are the achievements? First, it is very important to represent that uh, we had high level policy commitment for this. Our minister uh, and the DHIS team uh, were able to meet and then convince and it was agreed. So the commitment and the political will is high. We even went up to the president office to discuss some of the achieve, uh, some of our plans with this. So, in the Gambia, this is a very big senior management goodwill. Now, these are some of the things we have. Um, these are in terms of the architecture. Maybe we can look at this uh, in more technical later, but we have an administrative structure where we have uh, this general information for school. You can see here is, is the school list. If this school has been programmed during the pilot, and these are some of the variables we are collecting in terms of administrative structures to support the, the management. 
And then you can see now we are moving the school uh, census form customizing from aggregate to ensure that it can be put in the platform so that it can be it can still give you what the outcome of you what you want but the content or the input will be completely different in terms of um, what we are doing now the good thing also with the dashboard in terms of the the gis part which is also very important for the sector we have we are able to the, the dhis tool has that which is a very big incentive for school mapping and school planning uh, uh, school uh, mapping exercise for the planning unit using the the, 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 the ministry um, uh, the government map or the Gambia map now here is uh, some of the some of the example where you can use a, a, a draft and so the location of various schools uh, which is very important using the coordinates and it's already tested in the GI, uh, in the DHIS program uh, we were able to as, as part of the test a proof of concept we were able to put some um, some image data first to show so that we say that we can report in terms of um, in terms of uh, the historical data that we have in the image just to show management so that so, some of us are, are convinced that it will be something that we can venture into uh, and then the, the good news is we started because when we were getting into this relationship with DHIS, we said one of our biggest challenge was teacher attendance so in, uh, luckily for us we were able to build a new uh, application shifting from SMS to an app that teachers and head teachers can use now. Instead of sending SMS message, they can select uh, the, 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 the variable they need and they, it is so easy now to, to, for them to enter and respond to teacher attendance. But by the time it was completed and tested and we started uh, monitoring it, school were closed. So we, we, but we have very good example. Even our elderly teachers who used to struggle and uh, refuse to use the SMS, are now happily using this application and using the phones. So uh, we, then we have the COVID challenges uh, and opportunities. Uh, some of the challenges we have, uh, we, we, we had a technical committee that was developed to respond uh, to the, this high level policy was developed at the Ministry of Education to develop a response strategy. But one of the challenges we had during the development of the response strategy, when they came to EMIS and asked us what kind of baseline data we have to, to, to develop this, we, we could not use any data other than the number of students that are at home. So we had to go and look at uh, IHS data to, to uh, integrate the household data, and that was too old. So luckily we had a, a mixed report 2018, which was telling us the proportion of students that have radios at home, the proportion of students that have electricity at home, the, no, proportion of household, not students, proportion of household that have radio, TV, or internet, by district, so we were able to use a, a proxy indicator from the mix, but image was completely left out. Other than how many school, how many students do you have? We don't, we don't. We, image could not inform COVID, so this is one of the reason why image needs to really uh, uh, respond to resilience and and risk. So this and that's why it's important. We need to do more in this in this in this scenario. Imagine a whole ministry sit down, management want to do something rapidly. And you, 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 the only data you've been collecting all your life, you know, is, is not as useful as it used to be. So what was the problem? The data we were collecting is in the schools. Schools are closed. We, we, we had no other data to inform. Can we use radio for A, for region A? Can we use TV for region B? What can, can we use? Who, who needs what? We didn't have that. So those are the issues we had. So access to, and again, when we eventually use other data, secondary data to inform our response strategy, we said TV and radio, there were no way we can monitor what was happening. Learning, monitoring of learning. Earlier I said classroom observation. We were able to monitor classroom observation, SMS for teacher attendance. But how do you respond? How do you monitor who was listening to a radio station? Who was listening to a TV? Who did what? Who used WhatsApp? the ministry was completely the monitoring and evaluation process of the ministry completely failed it was kaput it couldn't continue monitoring what was happening out there so we are completely confused and now we are report, re, re, opening schools we don't know how much learning we have lost other than counting the number of hours that we have closed the schools how much learning has happened we have no idea so we are going back to the schools nobody can emis cannot tell Monitoring evaluation cannot tell us other than we have to embark on very expensive studies that has to start before school, op that has to start after school open. So we go back to school and then start all over. We don't even know which, what child lost what, who remember what, who lost what. So these are the things that we are confronted now. Now we hope that uh, there will be a DHIS Academy sometime later. 
um, and then we will, well, Christine has talked about that, and then we hope that we will be able to um, build a resilient and uh, uh, image that will be able to be responding to this kind of emergencies and risks, and even inform um, policy managers uh, 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 very well. But for example, the, another thing is we had uh, this year, we were able to develop an education simulation model uh, that is also because schools are opening, this model can work. We now look at education simulation model that advise school reopening based on the aggregate data we have, based on the number of classes. If you have to reduce your class size from 45 average to 30, how many more classes do you need? How many more teachers do you need? We can do that. How many more marks do you need? What do, how many um, temperature monitor do you need? What are the opening hours? How much students will be out of class? because of you are forcing them out of class, not out of school, because they are already in the school, but because of social distancing and class, reducing the class size, they might have to wait, come in the morning or in the evening, or maybe on, a, on an alternate basis. We can do that. But remember, one of the things I am saying about this education model is, when the image team was developing the education model, it took us so many hours, the capacity to ensure that we can develop a model to respond to issues was a huge challenge for us. We had to uh, we had to work with our consultant to support us. And but if we didn't have that kind of institutional um, understanding and capacity, which is isolated, we would we were not going to able to build education model. So we are hoping, hopefully, uh, IMIS would have the, this intervention. Will will will, will in, as part of it, we will have capacities that can respond to developing tools and models that will help the system. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Alpha. You really set the scene uh, for the the coming this uh, session. Um, so I before uh, I um, we will reply to 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 maybe questions on the CUP. But um, then I will call upon uh, Dr. Prosper, the ambassador from the uh, his Uganda, to continue with the decentralist tell about the decentralization uh, uh, approach. Uh, that uh, that um, the his Uganda are uh, using and the ministry in in the Uganda over prosper. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Christine, uh, to the organizers of the of this uh, conference and the opportunity for us to share our work uh, in. Um, DHIS2 for education, uh, another use case outside health. Uh, we, we first of all want to appreciate uh, our, our funders, NORAD, who made this, all this possible. The University of Oslo, the HISP team, Save the Children uh, for the work towards uh, the achievements that we are going to share uh, today. So, um, IMIS uh, in Uganda, what actually we've tried, we've come to learn having worked in health for now over uh, dhis 2 for health for now over 10 years we just have come to learn that the the, the structure the coating the use is, is almost the same so uh, and what this mean uh, means is that um uh, moving from health to education will, will be very easy for most of the countries that uh, plan to implement dhis 2 for image um, so to to share uh, our our use case or our 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 work and implementation in Uganda, uh, we are looking at the background of how the the IMIS has been working in Uganda. Uh, typically, it has been a centralized and it is still meant a centralized system uh, where data is collected from the from the schools by the national teams uh, entered and managed at the national level. And so this uh, implementation was and one of the attempt to be able to decentralize that process. Uh, and this process is quite very costly, as you, you can imagine, uh, right from the process of preparing tools for data collection, the data collection itself, uh, the entry, the cleaning, analysis, and dissemination. And, and, and also this leads to delayed feedback into the lower levels, the subnational, which would include the districts and the schools. Uh, in, some, in some countries, they have talked about um, over a year to be able to get back feedback after the data is collected. 
and, and this affects so much uh, the lower levels in terms of timely uh, decision making uh, for us to be able to monitor the, the progress of the schools, to be able to monitor the schools and the, and the resources. And this process uh, really uh, leaves out the district education team, uh, teams uh, who solely uh, are the main beneficiaries of this data. So you have the, this process by passing them and so um, uh, challenges them with how to use the data uh, when it's outdated. So this is the kind of background and the rationale for why we we, we, we pattern with the different uh, organizations to be able to implement EMIS in the DHIS24 EMIS in Uganda. Uh, our implementation goal uh, was basically to uh, be able to pilot uh, with funding from NORAD, we was able to pilot, was to be able to pilot uh, this DHIS24 EMIS uh, and be able to assess the, the, the implementation to be able to inform scale, but also to inform also our DHIS to development to support this uh, use case. And this was achieved through the process of uh, uh, customization and deployment of DHIS2 platform as an electronic uh, image at the district level, uh, building the capacity for the Ministry of Education and Sports. Uh, plus the districts, uh, particular focus to the district education teams uh, to be able to manage the processes around the data collection and, and processing. Uh, all in this, all in all, in all to be able to decentralize collection, capturing, validation, processing at the districts, but also look at the schools if they are able to capture the data and be able to analyze at the school level. Uh, support analysis uh, were very key. It's always good to collect data and be able to analyze it so that you can inform your decision at the national level and sub-national levels. And finally, uh, through the assessment of the usability of the system and also the implementation uh, at the district level so as to be able to see its, the possibilities of scale and also the possibilities of use at the district so those are those were our implementation goals and we have basically been able to achieve most of this as we shall share moving forward so in terms of the scope uh the first initial um implementation we've had some kind of phased and overlapping uh, uh, implementation uh, scope the first initial was to pilot, and this was to pilot into two districts, uh, representing an urban district and a rural district, just be able to compare the changes, the benefits, and how it's used at these different levels. So two districts were selected by the Ministry of Education and Sports, and we used uh, uh, those two districts as our pilot. And, um, just before the, the, the end of the pilot, uh, because the, the, the pilot had raised a lot of interest from the district level, we got uh, more support to uh, start the scale, uh, starting with two districts. And the two districts uh, yielded uh, seven administrative units. So when, I talk about, when we talk about administrative units, we are looking at where the data, the data entry and, and analysis is happening. So these are seven units. And what is very interesting, one of these two districts uh, is one of the districts that has the highest number of schools, almost over 6,000 schools, and it's, a, it's within the capital. Uh, and so the success in this scale will really uh, also mean that uh, this uh, will be able to be scaled across the country. And uh, again, during this same implementation period, uh, our scope has uh, moved also to be able to support uh, the education. And uh, this is now a nationwide uh, implementation uh, of, of, of DHIS for EMIS. And, and this is in particular looking to support the Ministry of Health as the plan for reopening of schools is, is ongoing. And, and we're looking at data being collected from the, all the districts across the country, almost over 40 districts. Uh, and this, this data collection is happening through 
to uh, the district and municipal education officers being able to make phone calls to the schools and get data on enrollment, special needs, and hand washing facilities in preparations for uh, reopening uh, as a COVID measure. Um, so in the first pilot and the, the scale, the strategy, uh, first of all was to get buy-in as, as Alpha mentioned. Uh, it's very, it was very key for the Ministry of Education to be able to buy into the DHIS2 uh, pilot and later on the extension and the kits, uh, which is more focusing on that analysis as Taj will be able to, explore, to share. And also even this COVID response data collection uh, that is, uh, is ongoing. So the Ministry of Education, I want to appreciate also the team that is already in attendance uh, from the Ministry of Education and Sports that have joined us. There are also the district teams that have also joined us in this, in this conference. Uh, for the support and the work they've done to make all this uh, a success. So we also had to do orientations and sensitizing the district teams because they, are the, they were the custodian, they are the custodian of the data and we needed to see how to use this data alongside with the partners within the district and also at the national level. We had to uh, study, since most of us were from the health background, we had to study how the education EBS works, and this was through the reviews of the, the previous systems, the current system, the data collection, and also going to the field to be able to see, as you can see from the picture down there, in one of the, of the, of the offices of primary school, trying to understand how the data is collected, analyzed, transmitted, and, and, and at the school level. So that will be jointly with the Minister of Education, uh, his Uganda, and the partners save the children. Uh, then we embarked on the customization of the tools that are used in the data collection. And particularly for this, we were able to customize the annual census tool, which will also happen to be almost a generic tool across the, the, the developing countries. Uh, the tool that you've seen at share is almost a tool that is used in Uganda. So it also shows that um, it will be very difficult, very easy for large countries, just like we've done for health uh, in, in, in Africa, when we start uh, using DHIS2 for English across. And this also, we had to look at schools being put into the system, the shape files in, in put, be able to that would be able to uh, help the district education teams in their planning and management of schools. Capacity building was also one of the strategies that we employed uh, from training the users, Ministry of Education, on how to, uh, the system is customized to training end users on how to enter the data, how to clean it, how to, to analyze it, and be able to present it. As you can see, one of the pictures there, that is a, a regional training, uh, the participants from the districts trying to log into the system and do hands-on training. Uh, the other strategy was also uh, around equipping the, the district teams to be able to implement. What was more challenging in most of the, the, of the districts is the, is the IT equipment that is, that is currently in education offices. Some of them, some districts is not existing, while some of the districts really need their need. So we need to be able to equip them so that they can implement the, the, the program. But on the ground, on, on, on the ground that uh, you know they would be able to maintain this uh, this IT equipment and be able to, uh, to to replace it in case of any loss. We've had a lot of support supervision, both on site and online, to be able to uh, further train them and also be able to. Uh, identify areas where we need some support. Uh, one of the areas also looked at is integration of data system. And this particular is of the, of the requirements for knowledge to be able to understand how we can be able to leverage on the existing health systems and systems to be able to, to 
to support our image. So um, the Uganda Revolution is the national system, so it's another body that keeps the, the, end, the, the end of level examination uh, results that we also able to import in our system. Uh, Prosper? Uh, experience sharing was also one of the other keys. Experience Prosper, can you come closer to the mic? Sorry, experience sharing was also one of the other uh, key strategies that we, we had. As you can see in the picture there, um, you will see that we had a, cross, a, a team across uh, the, the two participating um, uh, countries, which was the Gambia and also the University of Oslo, and the children. Christine is in the back there, uh, she listening from experiences from one who are implementing this. Uh, and, and this was an opportunity for, for the team in Uganda, particularly the Ministry of Education, to be able to uh, understand and be able to share experiences and key learning lessons of how the implementations are ongoing. Uh, and, and we have also worked very closely with the district health teams. So the district health teams have been using DHIS2 since 2012. So they have acquired a lot of knowledge in terms of you know, managing the system, data collection, and even use. So they have been very key in, 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 in supporting the districts to the, the district, the, health, the district uh, education teams uh, to use DHI. And then finally, uh, the, one of the other strategies we have been looking at was to really advocate uh, for the for the DHIS to use in IMIS across the different partners. Uh, in, in, in this uh, picture, we are meeting with and sharing with one with the Minister of Primary Education. Uh, and also we have taken time to uh, write different proposals, both in country, uh, to be able to support the scale in other countries. And, and we've continuously been engaging partners, different partners and donors to, to, to support the implementation of DHIS24 image. Um, and then uh, periodically we've been sharing uh, our, our, out, our, our work with, the, with the, the, the permanent secretary, the state, the, the state minister, uh, ministers on, on what is happening. And the, like the achievements so far we've been able to see and some of the lessons learned uh, and this basically are, are very similar to what we, we, we had from Alpha in the Gambia. Um, the centralization of, 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 of EMIS is very, is, 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 is workable and can be implemented at, at all levels. And uh, we, we've been able to, to, to uh, uh, to get buy-in from the Ministry of uh, Education and different stakeholders. And we've gotten many partners now interested in supporting. We have UNICEF also uh, uh, looking into supporting the districts that they, they, they want to they are support. They are really, uh, a lot of awareness and willingness to be able to scale this. And we hope that uh, in the next year, we, we should be able to uh, we should be able to see uh, the scale to more districts than this, than this year. So in terms of innovations, um, there are quite a number of innovations, but what was just to share in this uh, academy, I mean, in this uh, conference, uh, is the innovation around, uh, around, um, um, uh, around internet connectivity for the district. So um, particularly, most of the districts are really struggling with the connectivity and uh, not only for education sector but also for other sectors and uh, this uh, shared internet uh, with, patterned with the telecom uh, has been really uh, another um, game changer in terms of the implementation so this has allowed us to be able to uh, maintain the, the system up and money may keep in touch with the with the teams uh, in, on, uh, in the ground through WhatsApp groups, Zoom calls, uh, and the internet is serviced and maintained by the telecom at no extra cost. And this is something that we really see that the, the health sector can also go relief 
and be able to uh, uh, implement this. Or we can also look in some, in some of the districts that this could be an internet that can be shared between the health and the education teams, and even who knows what other departments that are going to be using DHIS2 for, for, for their M and E would also benefit from this internet. Uh, in terms of the post-cutting sector linkages, um, uh, we, we, have, we, we had a successful uh, measles campaign, uh, measles and rubella campaign, and, and particularly for the districts where, where we were piloting, uh, the, this linkage of the, 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 the DHIS2 for IMIS data really supported the campaign so much. Uh, and this was based on uh, the fact that uh, the, the, the IMIS data provides um, a a denominator or the coverage uh, for, for immunization because the, the target uh, population is the children who are enrolled in schools. And so with having ready data that allows you to be able to uh, find your target in the different districts is, is very key. Uh, we, we had a, from the health sector we, we side, we had a challenge with you know, targets. And I think at some point we almost overshoot the target in, in some of the of the district because we do not have the right target and the denominator. So this uh, image linked with the uh, programs can really help um, in terms of the, the target, in terms of identifying the, the, in the sites where you are being used as areas where you where immunization is happening. Even in routine health management, outreaches sometimes happen in pools. So once the, 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 the clinic in a locality has a good understanding of the children in the area, they, it can help them to be able to plan uh, for the immunization program. The other area, of course, as I mentioned, was working closely with the, the district health teams that have used DHIS2 for quite a long time. The biostaticians at the districts have really been very, uh, very, very, very key in this implementation that they have been going ahead extra during the trainings, during the meetings, and even on site, uh, helped the, the education teams to be able to uh, enter their data and analyze it. And, and, and the challenge, of course, from the education sector has been the lack of IT and statistical persons to be able to manage this data. So the nearby closeness of these district health uh, teams have really helped um, in that area. Uh, when we look at the COVID uh, response, uh, uh, equally everybody knows the schools were much affected uh, because we had a challenge that schools had to be closed as being the most, you know, at risk uh, areas of the COVID uh, infection. So in that process uh, in Uganda, um, the, the close of the schools affected the learning, as, as Alpha was mentioning. Uh, and the government came up uh, with partners with initiative to be able to distribute homeschooling materials. Uh, and we did find that, you know, in this, uh, in the districts where the DHIS2 for IMIS has been working, especially Guru, they were able to use their data to be able to estimate, uh, to, to be able to um, uh, print enough materials for the for the population for the school population in their area, and and, and this has also really uh, driven us to the, to the to the fact that we are now trying to collect education data across the whole country and be able to centrally have it in DHIS too, and so we can be able to share it across with the ministry dashboard as you can see here, and they can be able to see our target in terms of you know when the schools open, uh, you know the projects where to where to, to, to monitor in, in case of the, of, the, of the COVID policies and guidelines. So um, this has really helped a quick, uh, rapid data collection that is happening from the 140 districts and almost over, over, over half are, are completing their, their, their data collection. And we'll be able to have this incorporated and support the Ministry of, the, of Education in terms of the, of the reopening of schools. In in terms of the future prospects and plans, uh, we, we do feel energized and, and, and motivated by the, the little that we have done, that this can be scaled out to all, uh, all the districts and, and institutions. We've been able to come up with a budget that we are 
we are we are trying to share with different partners here to to to, to, to support um we intend to go the gambia way and try to start testing the people attendance that is tracking the learners and the teachers and and the, the presence their presence performance and time on task uh we are in close talks with unicef and we are also going to extend our talks with world vision plan international who have been the partners supporting emis to also see how we can be able to support the different districts and then promote data utilization and, and finally, with the KICS project, we do look at the, um, being able to implement the five data framework where we will be able to now be able to reach the schools, the district, and be able to have dashboards where data can be discussed, distributed, made, and delivered done uh, in, in real time. Uh, and finally, to conclude, we want to really acknowledge the team members from the Ministry of Education listed here. Uh, 13 of them have been worked with the, with the system and have really uh, supported the districts in terms of the data collection, the data use, and also providing uh, um, support supervision led by Dr. Cleofas, uh, the Commissioner of uh, Basic Education. And from the HISP team, the, the team that has been behind the customization, the training, the online support, uh, to there's also the Ministry of Save the Children team in Uganda that has also been able to advocate and promote the DHS the, the to use. And then finally, uh, finally, uh, also to the NORAD, our founder, to NORAD, our founder, who has, who has really put a, a lot of money into this implementation and continue to support even the extension uh, alongside the KICS project. And his uh, also team, Professor, Christine and team who have also been guiding and supporting the implementation. And lastly, to our district education health teams, uh, particularly for the pilot district, Gruman Mayuke, then Wakisan Tungamo, who have just joined us. Okay. And lastly, to all the district uh, and municipality education officers who are participating in the current data collection uh, for the COVID response. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Prosper. This was very, very interesting. And as you, uh, um, audience, as you heard, we are now entered into the, the second item on the agenda, meaning the innovation and cross-sector experiences and innovations. We will continue with Jerry from his Western Central Africa. Jerry, are you ready to share your screen? Uh, and yes, hear... I am. Good, good, good. And there we will hear the, the solutions and innovations from the Gambia. So we're going from Uganda back to Gambia. Uh, and that's how it has been because these two two implementations has been sharing um, experiences and learnings across. So over to you, Jerry. Okay, thank you very much. So we are going to talk about the innovations uh, in the Gambia, actually. So we're going to talk about two things: um, the daily attendance for teachers and students, um, and then the individual uh, learner or students track. So let's talk about the daily attendance. I think uh, with the alpha presentation, you realize that there was a former system that was around and they were actually sending the data through SMS and they were having a specific format where you should send the data to. And the problem was uh, the format was a bit difficult for people to, to, um, to, I mean, send data with. So you had issues with bad formatting and it was difficult for them to compile the data, aggregate the data, analyze the data. So what happened is that we, we just, uh, developed an Android app because they already have a close user group where they could actually send um, uh, uh, data or call each other um, in a, an environment where the, the cost is very low or free for the teachers. And uh, so with that, we actually made sure with the app that we could actually send the data through SMS. So they enter the data in the Android app and then they, they send the data uh, through SMS. You also have in the, with this uh, app the possibility to analyze the data locally. So they have a chart where they could actually monitor the, the presence and absence of, of teachers and, and learners. And this has, they would, since this is connected to DHIS2, of course, they, could, they also have analysis tools made available to uh, uh, analyze the data through dashboard and, and uh, um, an analytics tools. 
So you realize that with this, we are able to decentralize the, the, the system and the regions were having uh, the data and they could actually uh, monitor schools. Um, this is a snapshot of a completeness rate uh, of, of uh, the daily attendance for primary LVE primary here. And this is from DHS2. So for daily attendance, the coverage, coverage is four out of six regions uh, that are currently using tablets and the app to actually send the data through SMS. Now, region one and region two are supposed to follow. They already have Chromebooks and they are going to use internet to enter the data. We'll talk about that later on. So we have more than 800 public schools now using and it's from urban, urban to rural schools and from uh, lower basic to uh, senior um, SSC, which is primary, uh, junior secondary school and senior secondary school, or high school. So when it comes to achievement, we have uh, 800 tablets that have been uh, procured for the schools and cluster monitors. Cluster monitors are just uh, in between the, the districts and the, the school and they actually monitor the, the schools. And they actually have um, been uh, trained on how to use or send the data. So for example, uh, you also have the cluster monitors that actually uh, assist the, the teachers in, in sending the data. And if they have issues with completeness, uh, what happens is that we, we uh, tell the cluster monitors, or they tell the cluster monitors, and the cluster monitors go and monitor the ones that are having problems entering the data so they can assist them. Challenges, um, the first challenge was for now in 2020 was uh, COVID-19 because uh, since the, uh, the COVID-19, the first case was uh, declared in, in the Gambia, they decided to, to shut down or lock, to go on lockdown and the schools were shut down for a while. So there are no more entering data for, for, for daily attendance, uh, but they are planning to, to restart. So I'm, I'm sure it's going to continue. When it comes to uh, the management of, of, of mobile devices, the challenge that we have is that we didn't have an SOP for uh, uh, mobile device management. And uh, this is also crucial. And we, all, we also don't have a, a fully fledged MDM uh, that could actually help. The third challenge that we have with this was uh, the completeness, which was uh, something related to the DHS system. But we actually discussed with the developers to see how we can address this uh, uh, issue and it's actually linked to the fact that uh, Saturday and Sundays were part of the denominator for the completeness rates, but, um, but usually students or learners don't go to school on Saturday or Sundays in the Gambia. So let's talk about the track implementation. Uh, can we I start. Can I interrupt, Jerry? Sorry, you you say MDM. What is that? And what okay. <laughs> okay. No. And Okay, MDM is a mobile device management solution. So it's actually a platform that helps you manage the devices that you have. So you can actually install application on, the, on that. Uh, 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 from that platform, you can install application on your mobile devices. With that platform, you can even uh, remove or delete data on a device that has been stolen, for example. So this is uh, a short definition of uh, an MDM. And the challenge was that you didn't have it or? Yes, yes. We didn't have a fully flex because what the MDM that we had was uh, just to install applications on, on the, the, the various devices, but it was difficult to actually control the device remotely. But in this case, we needed to control the device remotely. Super, thank you. Continue. Great, <laughs> great. So the second thing will be the, the track implementation. So we started uh, with, uh, we, are, we are planning to have three trackers, one for students, one for teachers, and one for class, classes. And first of all, we started with the, the students tracker. So it's now implemented uh, in, in, in two regions. We already developed the students tracker and the teachers tracker. Um, the things that are grayed out are things that we haven't done yet, but we are planning to do. So, yeah, what sorry, it comes, sorry, 
sorry, yes. to, sorry to interrupt again. For the wider audience that are not inside the lingua of DHS2, tracker seems to be a kind of an odd, uh, odd naming convention. So you could maybe say that it's a register, huh? it's a student register. Yes, yes, okay. So uh, this is <laughs> so this is an application that actually uh, mimic the, the student register where you could actually enter data for bio, um, you can enter bio data, social economic uh, data, and also assessment data. Uh, so you could actually uh, track the students from grade one to, to grade 12 and see how it is performing. You can, we can track the attendance of, of students and also have information related to social economics. This applies to teachers tracker too. So you can track teachers. You have their bio data, you have the data related to their qualification. We will add the data related to our work history and also information or uh, uh, tracking information re uh, regarding their leaves and disciplinary records. Okay, so for uh, the tracker implementation coverage, uh, you have 11 districts out in, uh, in two regions, Region 1 and Region 2. And they have 200 public schools that are currently uh, using the system. So you have uh, 231 students uh, that are enrolled or will be enrolled in the, student, in the system. Then you have, it's actually urban and rural, and you have from from the lower basic to the senior uh, secondary education, which is primary, uh, secondary, and high school. We, um, for the implementation, we, we thanks to Nora, we had, uh, we were able to have 200 Chromebooks. Uh, we actually uh, printed the questionnaires and we had the buying of the head teachers and they actually uh, sent some, um, some staff, three at least, uh, that were IT savvy. And so they were trained on how to enter the, the data in the, the Chromebooks. For, for the schools that were already having a system, a uh, local system that actually uh, tracked their student or actually mimic the, the student register, we, we will import the data in THS so they don't need to enter the data in the system. Uh, we are actually thinking of a, a VPN solution where we can interconnect all the schools by internet. So uh, with that, for example, uh, every school can send the data through internet. Uh, but it, it's, it's been explored, it's, it's not uh, implemented yet. So we're also exploring the, uh, an MTM solution. Uh, achievement, so we have uh, trained uh, around 600 teachers and Currently, this is being used uh, in Region 1 and 2, of course, funded by NORAD. And with this now, we have uh, uh, enrollment data. So we have uh, information regarding how many enrollments you have in, in various grades by gender, by sex, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, we've been working continuously in supporting and uh, supervising the, the, the end users. Uh, we have support from, from, uh, the, from HISP. We have uh, support from from the the EMIS team that, and I mean it's a whole chain of support from from top down. So um, we also trained the EMIS team on how to maintain and develop a tracker so they could maintain their tracker. And I mean this was a joint develop uh, development. They worked with us in in developing this tracker together. So these are screenshots of, of uh, a dashboard in the system where we, we get the data from the, the tracker for the individual. So this is individual data that has been aggregated. Um, this is the same uh, second uh, screenshot of it. And then uh, we go to the challenges. So uh, due to COVID, due to the, lack, uh, due to the, lack, uh, due to the lockdown, um, we, this data entry process has slowed down because officially uh, data entry has stopped. It's actually some of the, the, the teachers or staff, were, since they have the Chromebooks and they can enter, enter the data offline, they continued entering the data willingly. And sometimes the MS team goes and, and synchronize the data with, with, with them because with the Chromebooks, you can actually enter the data offline. So, uh, that was one thing. Uh, we are actually planning to use the 200 Chromebooks to enroll all the learners in the, in the country. So uh, we will actually capitalize on the capacity that has been built throughout the, these months uh, regarding entering the data in the system to actually enroll everyone in the system. 
uh, we, like I said, we, we need a fully fledged uh, MDM to, to actually uh, monitor all the devices when it comes to Chromebooks or, or um, tablets. And um, we realized when we were implementing that some of the school were not having admission numbers, but we needed a, 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 an ID for, for students. So we actually divide, design, our gener um, design an ID scheme that could be coupled with, with pictures or photos of, of students to avoid duplicates in, in the future. Um, workload of, uh, on teachers, uh, currently they're actually enrolling everyone from one grade to another, and it's uh, a lot of work for now, but this will be reduced uh, along the line because uh, uh, teachers will now, after the end of the year, if everybody's enrolled, they can they will only enroll newcomers. So it will, it will be limited, they will have, this will be reduced. And we also had um, system limitations in, in DHIS suit that we actually uh, tried to mitigate. We had to work around it. And uh, we also, some of them, we addressed it to the, to the, um, the developers team so that it should be solving in a couple of, of months. So thank you very much. Over. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. People yes. are posting questions in the chat. We will encourage you to, to move over to the community of practice for the for the DHS2 for education because then we can continue to discuss. However, I think we can take time for a couple of questions, Jerry, if you're ready. Yes. Can we have access to the demo? Yes, yes, of course. You can have access to the demo. So please demo. check out our on the DHS2.org. We have an education uh, or the COP. We will also um, I think Duke will talk more about where the common global resources are. And all the question was uh, something to do with a unique idea and when people are switching schools. Can you comment a little bit on that? Okay, so um, the unique ID, yes, it's what we did was going to be a unique ID. Even if you're switching schools, you will still have the same unique ID. Um, so it's um, a concatenation of, of year, uh, a random number, a school code. And what we, we make sure is that this unique ID will be made available. I mean, it will be the same for all the, the, the students in the, um, health inform in the education information system. Whereby if you go to another school, we can just uh, uh, look for that ID and uh, that's all. You, when you go to another school, you'll be enrolled using that same uh, learner's ID. Super. And then we have one question from Abdul Malik uh, to, to Alpha. Alpha, are you ready? It was the question about uh, teaching track, teacher tracker. Uh, and whether you uh, actually also track the number of lessons uh, taught by the teacher um, as attended by the learners every day, monthly and so on. Uh, are you there, uh, uh, Alpha, to answer? Yes, I'm here. Um, I think that's a very important question because um, the classroom observation tool is actually geared towards ensuring we improve the learning outcomes because we realize that many, uh, uh, our grade three students, there's a lot of students that are failing. Uh, nearly half of the students are unable to um, meet the national assessment test. So there was a need, or what, what can we do? It's like, let's go back and work on the what is happening in the classroom. And this classroom observation tool for a start was a pilot, a 20% of a survey that still, that looks at a, a, a supervisor or a teacher goes into a classroom who is not in that school and observe the classroom in town in the area of time on tax. Uh, the first five minutes in terms of um, what, how does the teacher is delivering the lessons and presentation of the lesson. Thank you. And there is one more question. And how about okay. the classroom okay. management of the teacher? How do they handle feedback? So it's about that. So actually we have a report at the end of the year. That report comes back to the standard and quality unit. And they use it for uh, the action for, for, for from the policy sector, from the policy point of view. 
but going forward with EMIS, we are hoping that we will be able to integrate this classroom observation tool as part of the team so that the data that is coming in would not be uh, completely different from the data that EMIS is, is monitoring. Because at the end of the day, we have to manage the data of the classroom observation tool too. Thank you. Super. Um, and it's one more question, I think, but then we need to move on to Seferino. Uh, however, it's, um, it's a question, I don't see who from whom, uh, is the system generating the idea or are you using national idea? So this is both for Jerry and Alpha, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I, I can um, just uh, say a little bit about that. The issue of the ID is something that we hope would be generated from the, the, the day the student is being admitted or come with the, you know, entering the class, the first day, the day you come with your parent to start. So we are hoping that the admission books and the admission register that are currently in the school would have to be adjusted. There will be new one whereby this is recorded and then it is transferred into the system. And this ID would be generated automatically. So in another word, every school will have their series of numbers. And when a student moves from one school to another, you move with that ID. And in terms of uh, image, it will help us manage number of transfers and the people who have exit the system. And eventually we'll be able to track who, who, who has moved, start which school, and eventually how they have been moving from uh, within the country and across the, uh, the region. So these are the things that we are doing, and luckily, we, the DHIS uh, support has been able to provide a randomly generated number, which was a big headache for us, because we were wondering how can we manage duplicates. But we, uh, luckily, we had that solved now. Teachers can generate randomly numbers, and there is the chances of another number generated like that is very slim, which is a big bonus for us. Now, our, our job is to ensure that there is a lot of capacity in terms of ensuring there is no duplicate, and this can be, can be scaled. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I think we now move on. Um, we, we see whether we have any remaining time for more questions. Otherwise, please move over to the COP so we can keep in touch for these uh, great jobs. Uh, super presentation for all of you, Jerry, Prosper, and Al Alpha. We are going now to Mozambique, going, uh, going south. <laughs> um, are you ready, Seferino, to share your screen? Over, Severino? Yes, he's ready. Hello, uh, good afternoon. Uh, maybe, you, maybe you put it in the presentation mode, or, or maybe because now we can see two slides, but it's okay. But there is something that duplicates or something. Ah, cool, super. Okay, Over. Uh, good afternoon, uh, everybody. My name is Severin Sojen, and uh, I'm from the East Mozambique team. So I will be uh, sharing the, the experience that we have uh, with the WASH uh, project that we are implementing here in Mozambique and also uh, trying to also to see how, what are the plans with regard to the expansion of the, the, the project uh, that came uh, as a output or as by, triggered by the COVID pandemic. So, uh, uh, so the, under the 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 the, the, the rate of water and sanitation, uh, we are uh, the, the government is implementing the wash program in the communities uh, in the eleven provinces of Mozambique, and uh, the 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 the, the, the part, uh, actual the, the the data currently has been uh, or it has been captured using ODK platform and. Uh, uh, because of the, the, the lack or the, the challenge that we are facing with the visualization of the, the, the information or analysis, overall analysis, uh, the, the, the DHIS was selected as a platform to be used to strengthen the process, the management process of the WASH data. And the uh, University of Oslo uh, uh, was uh, approached by UNICEF to support the, 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 the country. And, uh, and then at that, that point, we came in and then we are currently in the, the process of implementation of that of the project by where there is inter interoperability data coming from uh, the, the DHIS from OD, ODK and then being routed into DHIS2. And then we have now these are the output, some of visuals that can be generated uh, from the system where the analysis that you can do. Uh, so that we, as you see, there are different types of data from water 
systems and uh, pumps to sanitation systems as well. There is a sanitation in the community that is registered. There are some uh, uh, graduation process that also has been implemented to see whether there are some community that are elected, and then they follow some uh, specific protocols where by the hand they, 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 can, be, can, they can graduate as defecation free. So that, 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 that all this protocol, uh, the data is captured uh, using the ODK I mentioned. But now we are replicating this process into DHIS2 to make sure that there is a comprehensive uh, process uh, and then also all this validation approval can be done directly or internal using the DHIS2 platform, of course, with, the, with the, some data coming from ODK. With the, with the COVID pandemic, so there, is, there was, as everyone knows, that schools uh, were closed then uh, slowly with the, uh, the, the process and then the, the schools. In order for the schools to, to, to open, there is a focus on the WASH program. And uh, now UNICEF is working with the, with the department or, or the unit within the Ministry of Education or together with the, 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 the director of water and sanitation in order to include within the system some uh, processes that can highlight that they, they will get the information from each school, special with regard to the situation in the schools. Previously, the information was only like a very, very few indicators. They didn't have the situation for the school. It was taken uh, in uh, an overall from the whole community, from the schools, from the, whole, the community. But now, they, 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 what they want, they want for the information from each of these schools to be able to monitor, to, to know what the situation of that. If there is a possibility of, for example, uh, intervening, having some actions, uh, they, 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 there's a need of doing, doing that. So currently, there is a kind of, of pushing uh, uh, these interventions, community focus interventions, to, uh, to embrace the, the a, a kind of wide approach with a special focus on, on schools. Uh, as part also of this process, we start doing uh, assessment of the image in order to see uh, whether the Ministry of Education has a, such a system that could uh, 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 be used to, 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 to capture the, the information related to WASH and others. We identified that, uh, that, that, that there is, of course, there is a recognition from the, the Ministry of Education that uh, health, nutrition, water, sanitation, that they are essential for effective learning. Uh, and now also, they, they, they do the, as an example of that, there is a program that they call PRONAI, which is the School of Nutrition, that are, there are some selected schools that they receive uh, those uh, support from the ministry, uh, uh, which is uh, the, the, one of the ideas to uh, retain the students at school. And uh, some of these students, they, they, of course, they are from uh, non-vulnerable uh, uh, the families. So the, one of the, the, the idea with this program is to see how they can get the school, the students uh, to come and then to reduce the, 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 uh, the dropouts. Uh, so when we, are, we looked at that, we found that there are some challenges, for example, with the, with the education system, with the MEs, uh, especially, for example, the, the annual census that, uh, for example, a colleague um, um, presented from the Gambia, uh, the, the annual system, for example, that they have the system that is doing that. Here in Mozambique, this is done manually. The attendance registration for also is done manually. And uh, in overall, they, 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 do, they don't have, the Ministry of Health, the Education does not have a comprehensive or a functional means that monitor WASH and other key indicators, for example, the, 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 this school census attendance, there's no a comprehensive or integrated system that does, does that. So as output for this assessment that we have done, we, the plan now is to expand the WASH program to cover the, some of the, the goals that are, were set by the Ministry of Education, especially with the hygiene, sanitation, and nutrition, and also to support the expansion of the CNAS DHIS, which is the, 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 the platform that is 
now uh, operational under the, 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 the Directorate of Water and Sanitation, which is not in the midst of education. So the idea is to expand that to, to, to cover, to, to, to uh, also to uh, reach out and then get some information from the schools and uh, support the development of an integrated platform that will monitor all the areas and services in the school in collaboration with the communities and other partners. And at the end, also uh, focus on the uh, monitoring performance of pupils and teachers from primary and secondary schools with a special focus on OVCs. We have identified some of the, the, the NGOs uh, and uh, 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 community organizations that are working with the um, uh, OVCs. And then one of the, the, the target is to see also the, the, the sim, similar that, that, that I mentioned here, which has as a target to, to, to look at these um, vulnerable children, to keep them at schools and provide some uh, subsidies, for example, education fees. So the, the, the idea now is to, to expand to every, within this integrated system, this process of monitoring them and in order to make sure that they, 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 they continue at school, they don't drop out. If there is a drop out, at least they, 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 they don't show at the school that they, they, the process that goes there and then I identify them, find out the reason why they, 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 they are not showing at school and then trying to talk with the guardians and, and their parents for the, make sure that they return at school and then they attend. So that's the, the, the idea and with that, uh, I, I end my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Seferino. A very, very good, uh, interesting and good presentation to look into the potential of integrating um, the various uh, functionalities and having schools at the center. And I really think that, that can make a difference for, as you mentioned, for the voluntary pupils, uh, but also to, to manage um, both the health services, vaccine services, water and sanitation services, and the educational uh, data services uh, from the school level. That's very cool. We have gotten some questions, but I think we take them after uh, Knut and Tarje. Tarje, it's you. Uh, you can um, share your, your slides. And um, now we're entering into the plans and ambitions. And uh, we will hopefully stay on because hopefully we have time for some more questions and discussions afterwards. Over, Tarje. Hey. Can you hear me? Can, can. Great. And if you put it on screen mode, it's better. I will. Ah, you will. Good, good. <laughs> yes, so um, Knut and I, we have a few slides on uh, plans and ambitions moving forward with this. I'll jump right to it. I actually have only one slide for myself and the rest is for Knut. I'll spend a few moments just to reflect on this important aspect with with HISP. I mean, I don't think DHS2 and HISP would be anywhere near where it is today without the massive, you know, work of master students and PhD students over two decades. Um, and I think that's that's kind of a key characteristic, both in the institutional memory and in terms of the knowledge generation that drives this whole uh, ecosystem around DHS2. So, uh, and that's been a missing component so far. The, for the first year, we have not had a huge uh, budget on research, but uh, we have now complementary funding uh, to the NORAD funding that is focused more on the implementation and the activities you just heard about. We also have now funding through IDRC. Uh, the mechanism is called KICS, uh, Knowledge Innovation Exchange, uh, and they're funding a uh, uh, a few projects that are working with data systems in the education uh, space and, uh, and we are one of the lucky ones to receive funding for that and and in relation to this we have four starting PhDs uh, just now uh, and uh, they will focus on different thematic areas for instance from what the Uganda story you heard about with the district uh, district uh, information use and the focus on empowering districts. That goes way back to the roots of the whole HISP endeavor. That's how it started in South Africa as well, you know, um, strengthening district analytical capacity and then building slowly that, that uh, install, installed base of, uh, or institutionalizing the system uh, from the bottom up. And that's, I think the Unagana case, a very good example of, and then we are 
uh, lucky to have one PhD to follow and document and explore what 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 uh, are the challenges and and possibilities around this uh, in the Uganda. And the Gambia, as you heard, it's a very ambitious um, move towards individual records and this big data shift in education that we are now being a part of. And um, so again, that also needs documentation and a study to follow it, um, uh, taking on the the uh, real world problem and trying to look for you know uh, academic literature that can inform our approach to to uh, to solving some of these challenges of identification, you know, maintenance of this system. It's a huge endeavor to maintain an individual record system over years, both in health and education. So that's that's a very uh, sophisticated system that needs to be in place to maintain these efforts. Uh, Togo, we are still recruiting a PhD candidate there. And then we are also, you know, following this with more holistic uh, perspective. How can this, you know, platform that, that we have built out of health, accommodate needs in education and across countries, and how can we cross-fertilize both between <coughs> sectors and, and countries. And all of this uh, has been built around uh, an action research methodology where you know, the researcher takes the perspective and the problem, uh, the real world problem of, of local stakeholders as the starting point, and then try to inject uh, existing theories and knowledge, but also to generate new uh, theories and knowledge to to address the the actual problems, and then again we also have master students. Um, they are involved in more confined and focused projects. Uh, one of them is this uh, school report card in the Gambia. Where I'm supervising two students right now who are trying to technically look at how we can build an app for uh, for uh, DHS to to uh, to build on what they already have the the information requirements and indicators that they already have but to build that in a digital format. I think that's what I wanted to say, and just to say that uh, we're very happy to bring in this research component into this whole endeavor into education and to look at the synergies between health and education uh, over the next three years. And we, of course, always do that, but we are very happy to get funded to do it as well. Absolutely. So Knut, <laughs> Knut, can you continue, please? Thank yes, uh, Tadia, can you give, go to the next slide, please? Yes. Yes, so just to continue on this, uh, we are uh, very um, um, thankful for the uh, excellent support from NORAD over many, many years on the health side and very excited about this uh, sort of new initiative that's been going on for, well, close to two years now with, on the education side. And we see that there are a lot of synergies and that is also what NORAD sees. So we are right now uh, talking to NORAD about how to continue this and how to scale it up. We had a very small pilot so far that has really focused on leveraging the things that are already in place on, in terms of system functionality and the platform. And we've seen that we already, as you has been presented this, uh, this uh, morning, that a lot can be achieved with what is already there. But uh, with uh, a longer term funding for education, we will expand on the functionality that is more targeted to the needs of the education sector, uh, especially when it comes to what Tadia just highlighted, the need for, to focus on individual learners, uh, as, as is also uh, well backed up with the SDG4. So we really want to engage at the school level, but also at the teacher level, at the class level, and for each, each learner. So we will continue, as Alpha presented this morning, to expand uh, this, this effort at, of enrolling and uh, uh, registering data uh, for each, each student in, in the Gambia. We also really want to scale uh, up the efforts in Uganda, and we hope to do that with partners, as Prosper highlighted. Uh, we think that we can do something quite uh, similar in Togo. Of course, th that is a different um, educational tradition in the, in the French, uh, uh, Franco sphere, if you will. Um, so uh, we will have to do translations, obviously, but, but also the, the, the way that uh, the school system is uh, organized is slightly different. 
But the, an interesting uh, thing about the Gambia and Togo is that they are both in West Africa and, and, and uh, as such, um, there are regional bodies that we know, like ECOWAS, that we hope to work with. And then, very interestingly, uh, Mozambique um, has, has been presented. That will also um, be uh, part of uh, this, this uh, three-year new, uh, new uh, or continued contract. We also hope to expand to another country or, or, or maybe even two, it depends a bit. Um, and we were looking at uh, very interesting candidates, both in Africa and in Asia. And some of them are mentioned here. So very, very importantly, uh, what we have achieved, I think on the health side is, um, has been uh, very dependent on partnerships, not just with NORAD, but also with WHO, uh, and UNICEF and uh, yeah, PEPFAR and other very key players. And we, we, had, we had the announcement of CDC this week. Uh, so on the, in the education side, uh, the, <laughs> the uh, sort of corresponding major player uh, of convening, uh, convening power and uh, uh, focus on standards and data is of course UNESCO. We're very happy to work with the UNESCO Institute of Statistics uh, on this KICS project. And we really hope uh, to, to, to even go beyond that. But, uh, but th that is a very good start. And, and um, it was a little bit delayed because of COVID, but we're uh, doing, going full speed ahead now in this collaboration. Uh, similarly, we already have a long-term agreement with UNICEF. Uh, so we hope to leverage that um, uh, when it comes to uh, the education as well. Um, one very interesting um, uh, long-term uh, effort that UNICEF is engaging in is, is this data must speak, which is also present in several of the countries where we work. In addition to the ones, uh, the partners that are um, mentioned on this slide, we, we really hope to engage with other regional bodies such as uh, the African Union and uh, ADEA, which is Pan-Africa. Uh, of course, the Global Partnership for Education, which is already uh, behind the KICS initiative, uh, and the World Bank, which also is, is a major, major uh, uh, player in, in, in this space. So uh, in short, what we hope to do, and we see this, this current session as part of, is to build a strong community of practice. Um, around uh, uh, use of the DHS2 platform on the education side, uh, as, as well as health, and, and also jointly across the sectors. So as Kristin mentioned initially, we think, we think there is uh, considerable uh, potential for using DHS2 as a more common e-government platform. So the last slide maybe, um, please. Here. Yeah, that one, yes. So I uh, just want to highlight that we know that there is a lot of excellent um, uh, work, of course, already in, in, in any country we go to. And there is also a lot of local innovation that we've already seen um, in, in this um, pandemic period and, and, and prior to that. We hope to bring all those excellent um, initiatives uh, into make it easy to bring them into the DHS2 platform. Uh, yesterday there were several sessions and, uh, on, on how to create extensions of the platform and we very firmly believe that DHS2 can serve as a backbone for many of these initiatives and, and help them scale both within countries and between countries regionally and globally. And then I will leave some time for questioning. So uh, we'll just end with uh, some links to the demo uh, and uh, to our um, the website, uh, as well as, as uh, re education um, or more academic resources. So those three links, I think Gitaide will also post them in the chat. And of course, this, this presentation uh, will also be available on the, on the sketch, uh, yeah, on the agenda. So thank you very much, and we hope for an interesting discussion.
Thank you so much, Knut and, and Tarje, to, to, to wrap it up with the, the, the call for all our great partners to, to, to bring it on, to be, make us uh, um, enable the DHS2 to be a platform for education, as we have been able to do with the health sector for the last 20 years. So we, our ambitions are high and big, and we would like to, to, um, to turn the DHS2 into a platform for uh, use for managing the information systems for education in, in large, uh, together with partners. So please, um, you can just reach out to us. Us is the one that I've talked, and many others. Uh, we have some questions, um, um, and we have time for it. I don't know whether we should maybe take the question. I mean, um, the, 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 the software lead, Lars Erland, has had made one question, which could go a little bit back to the, to the Android and the Chromebook solution. I could mention it, so you can actually um, maybe, uh, regarding the Chromebook solution, did you write an Android app which was installed at the Chromebook? Uh, what was the experience with this app? Any problem related to missing internet access and so forth? Meaning, did we have any offline support and stuff? And then Dr. Dr. Adam Kossi from, from HISP Western Central Africa, having a doctor degree from, from the HISP and UIO, uh, are answering. Um, Adam, do you want to, to answer um, in public here? Are you there? And then over to Adam. If Adam must. If Adam is not there, I can read out and maybe Jerry can uh, ship in if, if, if um, necessary. The Chromebook are using the regular DHS2 Android app. However, an SMS app was developed to allow school using the, their phones to report daily attendance data. So that was the question. So please uh, uh, move over to the COP. Um, yeah. Alpha, you had some questions. Maybe you can do it orally. We have time for that one. You have two different questions. Sorry, I was struggling with my mic. I was not able to unmute, but now it's okay. Thanks. Okay, so please continue then. You heard me. If you have anything else to add, uh, Adam. I think I replied to the question on in the community uh, website. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good. So then, Alpha, do you do you want to 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 read your 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 questions aloud? If you're there and if you can unmute. If not, I can read it up, you know. Hello. So I, yeah, over. I was just thinking that it's important that um, we, we, we as government uh, get the support of the international partners. Uh, when I had the collaboration with international partners, and I said, this sounds like Paris, uh, the partnership in, in, in statistics for the 21st century. So I was saying, uh, we are struggling at the local level and maybe you international partners, DHIS, NORAD, UIS, and now we're talking about um, additional partners on the, on the table, uh, UIS, uh, are there. You might underestimate the influence you have in making our government to respond to this kind of interoperability in, in the image. Uh, there is a case for the Gambia. Um, the chances are we might be able to build the tool, but the, how do we bring the health sector on board to ensure it, it is functional? We need a huge commitment from the health sector to come on board, and we need WHO. We need you guys to come together and ensure that there is a concerted objective from you, we can bring, uh, and, and then together, locally and internationally, we can ensure that it is done. So please don't leave it only with us. We, we think you guys have a great opportunity to, 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 to make sure this happens. So the other question I had was for Taj. Uh, he mentioned the ecosystem. Uh, the ecosystem for me here is building one tool and eventually giving it, giving your back as a technician doesn't make sure it works. Five years later, you need experts, you need support, you need technicians. How do we ensure that we extend the ecosystem like we discussed in our plan to ensure that universities in the local area in, in Africa, in Senegal or in Gambia or Liberia can, can provide support for this. 
again, we think NORAD and all the support can, can help so that we begin to have the kind of PhD and masters you are doing in the UIO. Some of a limited of that, maybe a diploma in EMIS can be done in one of these African universities so that we can have beginning to have some kind of um, expertise around this in the near future. Because some of us are going to retire from this and then there will be a challenge for EMIS. Thank you. Tanya, do you want to respond? I could, uh, although we could yeah. obviously <laughs> discuss this ecosystem metaphor in many ways. I, I think uh, it applies both at the country level, like you say, and internationally, I mean, around capacity building. Uh, but uh, very simply, when I mentioned ecosystem, I think I, I thought about it in this uh, software platform sense that you have a technical core, uh, but uh, that alone is, is not very helpful. You need a whole ecosystem of capacity implementation experts like all the HISP groups uh, and you know all the knowledge academies, everything that is built around it for this to work in any particular setting and for it to be customized and adapted and, and built innovations on, on top of. So that for me is you know the HISP UIO perspective of an ecosystem. But then from a country perspective, you're also governing an ecosystem of you know uh, government uh, public sector uh, services and those need also to be seen as one ecosystem like you say how can you collaborate between the different uh, government departments and even within uh, education department alone you will have different um, or education sector alone you have different departments and different you know ownership of data and so on so there are many ways we can pull that metaphor but i think for for us uh, it's very important to recognize the importance of this uh, long-term university collaboration and capacity building around DHS2, which makes, a, which makes makes it a very agile ecosystem that can respond to COVID-19, but also uh, build a lot of exciting innovations. And for me, it's very important to see this uh, transference now that we have this large ecosystem. That is what makes us able to move into education and, and provide you know, uh, support and, and services and uh, build on the in-country capacities everywhere to 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 leverage this also in the education sector. That's that's it for me on ecosystem. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm trying to get the slide up so you can all read the the learn more about. The... Uh, all the links and stuff, but uh, we have troubles with that one. Um, okay. So, um, so we can rather go to the, um, to the, um, sorry, in the end here we have problems. I don't even see the chat anymore. There is one chat, please. So there's one chat more. Um, no. Uh, from from uh, UIS actually when we and maybe this is uh, for Alpha I don't know when we make it to health and education what is the entry point this is the school this is the health center and how to share same idea for both and again the question is is this system generated ideas that that question we had earlier uh, Alpha maybe you would like to answer that one or. Yeah, I, I think the, the 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 entry point should be from the. I'm assuming that everything is now working between health and education. The entry point should be from health. So it's like from bad to from the um, from bad to to, to to the grief. So we have a child born in the in the health center in a local community, and the data is registered, and then education have the data and is automatically monitored. So we keep looking at this child year one, year two, according to the education policy in the Gambia, the child is uh, year three. Then we just go and tell the family. Remember, we already have the other uh, ID system. We inform the family, oh, where is Mr. Alphaba? He should come to class. It's today is on the September 28th. We didn't see him. Then we can monitor our out of schools. If he goes, then, you know, these are the issues. And if the, the nutritional component of it will be coming from as a child and the more that I visit in the hospital, that record is coming. So when we want to measure um, uh, readiness to learn, which is an SDG4 indicator, it, it will be easy for the, for the country to report overlapping indicators that are nutritional, that are uh, physical issues, inclusive education issues, out of school issues, and all those things. So the starting point should be health if it works very well. 
But the fact that there is nothing right now and the, the biggest advo advocate and the driver for this is IMIS, we are beginning to say that we start it at the education department, working with all the partners so that we can eventually, with the, with the hindsight that help will come on board and then we don't have to do a lot of um, uh, groundwork, a lot of uh, mechanical work when they come on board. But definitely, uh, it, that's the thinking right now. Thank you, Alpha. I want to read one. We need to, uh, to stop very soon because uh, they need the room to prepare for the next session in a couple of minutes. But I would like to do the, the question from Claude. In many countries, external funding has been key to sustainability purpose. Is there an advocacy plan to sensitize the government to start investing into EMIS? And is the software free, uh, given free to countries? And of course, the software is open source, given free. Knut has, has also answered that, um, of course, they need the, 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 the cost is training, the support, the TAs, the computers, and so forth. But um, it's um, the advocacy for, for the government. That's what we do by sharing the good examples. And uh, maybe I should use a couple of uh, last minutes to thank everyone. Uh, there is an, uh, <laughs> a pretty intense um, uh, project group behind this work that you have been heard a little bit about today. We will, um, we will announce an academy. Maybe we do, depending on the COVID situation, of course, where we will share even more stories and best practices and invite more partners to present. We either do it digitally or we are continuing, uh, if we can see the flights start moving around in the air, uh, to have it in the Gambia as planned uh, and then we postpone it for maybe January or February. So, so keep in touch, uh, move over to the COP. I hope we can have a vibrant and active a community of practice discussion that we really need to, that we can uh, um, keep in touch and share uh, good examples and inspire each other. Um, so my, my, uh, my last word will be to thank everyone that have attended. I think this has been a very, very super example of, uh, of, uh, of sharing of experiences. And um, uh, please, um, please visit the C uh, community of practice. Please visit our our um, our um, uh, venues that we will uh, post there, the demo link and everything. And also our slides will be posted on the community of practice as well. So thank you so much, and we will end this session, uh, and the new session will start.